What the heck is love? Perhaps no other moment showed my early idealism about love than the royal wedding of 1981. My whole family woke up around four in the morning to turn on the TV and watch Prince Charles and Lady Diana get married at St. Paul's Cathedral in London. It was a live action Cinderella story. The bride was resplendent in a massive taffeta dress and veil with a 20 foot long train. The prince was arrayed in his uniform looking like, well, a prince. And when the Archbishop of Canterbury performed the ceremony, how could you top that? Did it even matter that little more than a decade later, Charles and Diana would no longer be a fairy tale, but just another divorced couple? I wish I'd known then, as Shakespeare put it, that the course of true love never did run smooth. But all my life I've seen love at its most unconditional. My mother and father showered love upon me as only first time parents with financial security can. <laughs> Teachers adored my enthusiasm in class. I wasn't being an ass kisser. I've always delighted in pleasing others. I was so idealistic and naive that I used to address other students right away in class as my friend, even if I just met them. Though the cruelty and pettiness of other children quickly disabused me of expressing such openness, I still believe, unlike Satra, that heaven and not hell is other people. In my youth, there was a strange fissure in my consciousness between love and sex. Love was beautiful and nobling. Sex was dirty and trashy. True story, I was a freshman in high school and when a classmate sold me a copy of a pornographic magazine. For the kids out there, this was long before the internet. It was the first time I looked straight at a woman's pudendum and perineum in all its fleshy glory. <laughs> I jerked off a bit to it, but I don't remember. I do remember, however, feeling shame and guilt and returning it to the guy afterwards. The fucker took it back, but wouldn't even refund me my money. <laughs> Needless to say, it was not the first time, first, the last time I encountered pornography and guilt. I was a classic late bloomer. With the onset of puberty, I became incredibly shy with girls. I still am. Beauty is so intimidating. Whenever I meet an extremely arresting creature, I keep telling myself that she's just a mass of hair, bones, organs, and feces, just like everyone else. But it never works. Um, I just uh, get into a puddle and just fall apart. And most of the other people in the room do too. Now Karen was like that. I met her when we were both volunteered at a soup kitchen. I was 17 and she was 15. Karen was smart, a student at the elite Stuyvesant High School in New York. She had the most arresting almond-shaped blue eyes and skin like porcelain. Her German heritage gave her the light skin, her Hungarian roots gave her the elfin face and dainty bone structure. I was just in heaven meeting her. Sometimes we looked into each other's eyes and didn't say a word. I probably only met her about 10 times in my life. That spring I was in high school band and marching in the St. Patrick's Day Parade up Fifth Avenue. I told her I was going to be in it, and she said she would look for me. The whole time I was marching, I looked around everywhere. I recognized a face or two, but not hers. The next week she saw me and was so excited. She explained to me and said, I saw you. Instead of thanking her, I petulantly replied, I didn't see you. <laughs> Just like that, she turned off. What a dope I was. I had no idea and held a torch for her for years. I wrote verses in her honor, considered her my one true love. I had no idea she had moved on. In fact, years later when I tracked her down and contacted her by email, she would completely forgotten me. <laughs> La donne mobile indeed. At least the spell was broken. I had to learn that life does go on after love. Now Karen was my first real crush. My first real love was Dante Alighieri. As a freshman at NYU, we were reading the masterpiece of his Inferno for a Humanities II class. I was given the creative assignment Write your own inferno. Although I could have written it all out in prose, I chose to start in verse. Long and well stirred, I must now be to fully relate this tale from my soul. Grim though it was, I beg you see and hear the truth of this heaven sent dole. I was 18 years old, and these words changed my life. They came out like they were always there, just waiting to come out. I knew I had a gift, and I found my raison d'etre. I know that uh, all of a sudden I wanted to be like the next Dante or Shakespeare. 
I know this might be outrageous, pretentious, or impoverishing goal, but it's what I want. Over 20 years later, it remains my guiding star. And here may be the dilemma. Though I have continued to love and even chase girls, I've rarely loved any at the level that I have with the muse. Women are lovely, life-changing, but they're not ideal. And they have their checklists. I resent being tested. <laughs> being on trial, though I know I'm a hypocrite too, because I have my own checklist too. So what the heck is love anyway? That's one the philosophers have been trying to answer, and I'm definitely no Plato. Today I'm exploring the country of my middle age. Love remains something that I would love to have, but the way I see it, love is rather different now. Love is now a verb more than anything else. To paraphrase Forrest Gump, love is as love does. Once I thought love was being with the perfect looking specimen and exchanging sighs, stares, and kisses. Now love is doing for someone and not caring if it's hard work or unglamorous or even if it leads to the grave. Even the being for me now has an active quality, like when my father had heart surgery last year and it was hard for us to be there at the hospital, but there we were. When my mother sprained her ankle last year, this year, my father applied the ace bandages every day. Now the beauty is in the sacrifice in a way I never understood before. Will I ever find that beloved? I don't really know. All I know is that I, I can't look for it anymore. I'm too excited about getting my writing off the ground. I just sent a theater company a copy of my play that I started because I just had to do it. Uh, I'm aggressive in a way I never was before. Maybe it's because at 40 I faintly hear the chimes at midnight. I only know no one is going to do it for me. To paraphrase Jonathan Winters, if my ship ain't coming in, you better believe I'm swimming out, swimming out to it. <laughs> so what is love after all? I guess it's as you find it. If you found it and it makes sense to you, far be it from me to tell you you're nuts. Thanks for living and keep loving. Yeah.